Listeners be advised. The Holiloquy podcast discuss matters related to the human experience and many that are sexual in nature. Due to this, some conversations may surround triggering topics such as sexual violence, self-harm, abuse, and much more. Please be advised, a list of crisis and psychological resources will be available in the show notes of this episode. With that said, let's get started with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please as we go through the following safety instructions. In the event that there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask will drop from the overhead. Please remain seated until the oxygen mask is flowing even if the mask is not motherfuckers can really hear me <laughs> okay so <clears throat> oh we're in person it's so weird it's so new <laughs> okay you know did i pop your cherry oh my <laughs> i am a version of the podcast so don't be doing stuff like that well, you, pop, you did pop mine i will say that this is the first podcast this is i've been very appropriate <laughs> on a conversation it is appropriate. I it say. is appropriate. This is <laughs> have you heard the pod? pod? Right. Have you heard the pod? <laughs> Let me tell you about my pod. <laughs> my pod. <and> <laughs> oh, my God. All right. What's pod got to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is this is a problem already. Oh, my gosh. I haven't even introduced the show. <sighs> Not professional. All right. We good. <laughs> I always say I'm going to be a professional, but I know I'm not. This is the president. This is what it's going to be. So we yes. just have to get used to it. It's yes. fine. Get used to it. <laughs> fine. <All right. clears throat> okay, we're good. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Whole Little Bit Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. This is your favorite host, Vernon T. Scott, also known as Slater Jackson. And for you freaky motherfuckers out there, Sebastian Zadens. On today's episode, it's already like a whole hot ass mess, but we will be talking about online versus traditional dating, <laughs> in a way, I, I guess. <laughs> but we're here. <laughs> And with me, I have the pleasure of having Sin, Sincere, this motherfucker <laughs> right next to me, like literally physically right next to me. <laughs> well, howdy duty. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm great. It's it's Saturday. <laughs> I'm in good company. Yes, yes. Oh, so we're excited. Saying. This is this is a new venture. So I'm excited to speak to y'all. Yay. To all the millions and millions of <laughs> y'all hear that voice. Y'all hear that. And my chuckle. mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're happy to have you with us. So before we get into the nitty gritty of the episode, do you mind telling everybody who the fuck you are? Like all the great things that you do. Like yeah. who the fuck is sincere? <laughs> well, sin is a lot of things. Okay. Um, first, just a human, just a guy, you know, <laughs> just a person. Out here but, in the street. Yes. <laughs> But, you know, I do a lot of things. I just, I just think, I think life is too short to be one thing. So um, I like art. I like music. I dabble in acting and modeling. And I'm just a lifer, you know, any experience that I have the opportunity to try, I typically try my best to do my best at it and have the most fun. And, you know, if it's, if it's, filled with passion, then that'll be what exudes. That'll be what comes across. So, you know, I'm, I'm a lot of things, but uh, I'm also a Gemini. <laughs> I'm a lover, not a fighter, you know, like a couple of things. <laughs> well, if you're a Gemini, doesn't that mean you're both anyways? Like you're a lover and a fighter or what, what does yes, that I'm mean? Yes, I'm bi. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm bi. I'm a lover love and a love fighter. Bi. You love a bi person. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> let me not let me not buy bait these people. I'm not buy. Let me stop. Um, <laughs> I do. I, there's duality in me. There's a. I have a dualist nature about me. I definitely try and do. Was that a word? That's not a word, is it? <laughs> Look, you made it to a word. Let's Google make it. it. Google it. I don't know, but um, there's definitely some duality to me. I think that again, life's too short to be just one thing. So I typically play devil's advocate. You know, I'm the one and I'm, I'm literally the person that's like 
but is there a reason not to do it? But what's the reason to do it? But also, should I do it? And then I end up doing both things. So mm-hmm. <laughs> a little bit of everything. Yeah, get your experience somehow. Slice of life. Why not? <laughs> uh, I, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I, oh, yeah. Uh, I, I think I've convinced myself to do a lot of things I know I shouldn't do. And, you know, <laughs> some of those things ended up being fun as hell. Some of them uh, ended up into some kind of tragedy. But you know what? <laughs> Growth is where we need to be at. <laughs> you have to do everything. Like today, I tried a cricket. <laughs> as in? Somebody had a cricket. It was um, salt and vinegar flavored. Mm-hmm. And I ate it. <laughs> was it tasty? It tasted like sunflower seeds. Really? But you could tell it was a cricket. It looked like a bee. It looked like a hornet. But um, yeah, I try everything. Like I like a couple of weeks ago, I went skydiving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I've driven cruise ships. I've done a little bit of everything. Let's say that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you met Britney Spears. And I met Britney Spears. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna fangirl for a second. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Her Lord and Savior, God me. Not, uh, Lord and Savior. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. You're lucky I forgot how to use the fan. <laughs> Free Britney. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, he did teach me how to use the fan, y'all. So, you guys. damn it, I fell. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> There we go. There we go. I hope you guys are used to the sound of the fan clacking now because every episode, every, it's going to be punctuation for every sentence. It is. You already know, but I had to come with the gifts and, and receiving as well, of course. But. Yes. I, I feel great because I, I was going to get me one and now I know how to uh, use the fan. To we do taught that. you how to tongue pop as so. well. I don't know if you did, but... <laughs> It was a it was a valiant effort. Oh God! Give me one. Give me just one. No, come on. I, I try. Like, We're testing. I, okay, I didn't even do it myself. Okay, whatever. We, we uh, tried it. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> see there. So I have do, to say, I can do the uh, tongue thing. I could. I could do that. That's. I know it's not the same thing. I know you guys can't see my face, but <laughs> <laughs> let's just say I you try. You get an A for effort. That is not a thing. <laughs> that is not a thing. You know, I just, I learned recently what that means. I had no clue. I thought people were just saying that you get A's for effort. I didn't know you actually used to have grade school where you get an A for how much you tried. <laughs> you know, I heard about that. Isn't Wait, that crazy? Did you listen to the read? <gasps> <laughs> so, okay. I, that's how I learned that's about exactly it, That's exactly what I was looking at. Period. Okay. But yeah, that, that shocked the hell out of me. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I thought it was just like, I don't know what I thought it was, but here we are. <laughs> now what? We've been not in the episode yet. But I, before we get into that, I think it was Crystal who made that point. But like, I think it was either Crystal or... Um, um, it was Kid Fury. Kid I think, Fury. Um, so for those that don't know, there's a podcast also called The Read. We're not really sponsoring them, so I don't... <laughs> Um, but, they get the free club. It's, 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 a, it's a wonderful show. But we share the love, yeah. So they were discussing the fact that apparently you used to get grade school like report cards or progress report, reports that would give you like a behavioral report, an effort report, and an actual grade, mm-hmm. and they all factored in together. So, for example, you could have like like an F, but get an A for effort, and that means that you tried your best, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's what you did. <laughs> yes, yes. And, so I'm over there. Okay, bitch. You have to say bitch before you tongue pop, and it's just not working. I'm gonna take a swig because <laughs> it's just not working. Maybe there needs to be like moisture. <laughs> I'm guessing you're over here failing as well. Is that how <laughs> see? Like, what are we doing here? What's the great? I step? also get an A for effort. That's the oh, difference. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I I, I think um, I think it was Crystal who said that. Wouldn't the goal be? Uh, to have like an A in the class with minimum effort. And I was like, bitch, you just attacked me. And I'm like, yes, that was me throughout all of high school. <laughs> <laughs> it's me with anything. I always have like beginner's luck. I'm great at the first time. And then when I actually try, it's like, no, just stop, please. <laughs> I don't like you. I don't like you. <laughs> That's how life works. You have to like not think about it, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's like a law of attraction or something. I don't know. Yes, yeah, law of attraction. <laughs> yes, attract the energies that you want around you. You know, I'm hokey things. pokey. I'm woo woo. I love a good uh, spiritual, whatever the case may be. You know, I brought my sage. I brought my cinnamon sticks. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta, look, 
air the motherfucker out. And I'm not talking about with a gun. Burn that <laughs> motherfucking sage, open the door, and let the <laughs> shit leave. Good open energy. two doors, actually. Because I always, I start oh. off, uh, whenever I sage, I start off at my front door um, to welcome in new energy, walk around the house, and then I end up at my back door to let all the old energy out and then leave my door yeah. open for a little while and let my sage sit and burn a little bit now there was this one time i could have burned down my apartment oh my god <laughs> i wasn't paying any attention i was like you know what i need to sage out my um bedroom yeah. um just you know i left it on my bed a little while start watching a little bit of tv before i rearrange everything and i was like mm, it's a little smoky in here what the fuck is going <laughs> on and i have my sage like on a very low burn <laughs> so i walk into my room and i'm like oh my god this bitch started decided to do a little, like a little spark hold on it's time to put you out girl come on <laughs> you literally said i'm gonna bomb the look and said all the negative energy is leave it bitch and then I was like, <laughs> do you say do the work you need to do but you're not burning shit down up in here it was making a point and you know what needed to happen <laughs> it did it did <laughs> and look i slept very good that night <laughs> Mm, 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 mm. But anyways, we're supposed to be talking about online versus traditional dating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the problem with my show. We get off into these tangents and people just like burning. This is not what the fuck you said we're going to do. <laughs> it's so much fun, though. <laughs> it, is. <laughs> it is. But now we're here. So one of the things that we were talking about in the intake meeting to you know, build up the episodes and shit was how online is becoming the norm. It's not only become the norm, unfortunately, it's 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 like the bare minimum. Mm. <laughs> People don't I could don't get me started, you guys. Well, that's what this conversation's <laughs> about. Like, bitch, you're supposed to get started. <laughs> I just don't piss me off. I just piss myself off thinking about it. There are so many situations um that end in you begin online and that's where it ends and that's mm. and that's the bare minimum for me it's it's this instant gratification culture of once you get the swipe that's all you care about was the mm. instant gratification and i was actually thinking about this recently um it's not just dating it's our culture everything now becomes what can i get as quickly as i can get and it's like that boost of serotonin um social media specifically has given us this uh validation <laughs> mm. that when we get a like or a follow that somehow it relates to our self-worth and i've had people on these apps <laughs> because now that it is online you know apps are the president you know if you especially in our culture in the queer community you can't just go up to anybody <laughs> and mm. you know assume hey this person could possibly like me the way that that i like them because inevitably you could end up in a hate crime <laughs> mm. so it's a little safer there are it's moments you know there are so many people i've heard so many horror stories of uh, people getting uh unfortunately trigger warning um drugged raped um stolen from or set up um there's a lot of situations that end in uh less than positive interactions and there's also great times you know my last relationship uh, was literally from uh, one of the apps <laughs> and it lasted pretty long um, but there's there's just there's such a there's such a precedent set now that it has to be it has to almost be like studied first you mm -hmm. have to see someone's social media and their profile and there's no like actually getting to know anybody it's your first assumption and your first judgment based off of what they decide to show. And not everybody's good at that. If you're great mm. at that, then more power to you. <laughs> um, but not, not all of us like to, you know, find 10 pictures that, uh, you know, somehow explain our entirety. We're not that one dimensional. So I just, I don't know, there's something about the online thing that I don't vibe with and parts of me love it. For hookup culture, I'm sure it's great. It's again, that instant gratification of you like me, I like you, let's go. The Holiloquy podcast focuses on the variability of sexual expression. When it comes to sexual expression, we often depend on pornography to illustrate how one must perform sexually. For those who have not learned this by now, the stuff you see in porn is not real. 
Pornography provides a singular perspective of sexual expression that is not often the reality we see during our own sexual encounters. The Holiloquy Podcast is a conversation that takes you outside of the compressed box of what many know about sex. Some of the topics we discuss include kinks, condom usage, status disclosure, and past sexual experiences. The Holiloquy Podcast steps out on sexual norms and recognizes that the norm is not the only normal. Subscribe today and join the conversation. dimensional so I just I don't know there's something about the online thing that I don't vibe with and parts of me love it for hookup culture I'm sure it's great it's mm-hmm. again that instant gratification of you like me I like you let's go <laughs> but when it comes to something more long term which is kind of where I'm at in my life right now um because I can't I for myself I don't find gratification any longer I've had my whole face let's say that <laughs> I've did, I've you know explored and uh, exploited the apps. <laughs> I started at a very young age. I was like 14 or something crazy like that. Again, trigger warning for uh, those of you that went through something similar, but um, there's just, there's this culture around it that I'm, I'm not vibing with. I want someone to be bold enough to come up to me in person and let's like build a connection. And unfortunately with online, it's very easy to say, okay, <laughs> Um, we talked this one time and I wasn't feeling it. So now I'm never speaking with you again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of the, that's, that's kind of what it's become is I've had people literally tell me that they, they like everybody. They swipe right on literally everybody <laughs> and just wait to see who bites and whether they actually want that person or not. <laughs> they, you know, so mm-hmm. what say you? <laughs> oh, you're ta- you, you, you. By the way, you guys, on? we met on one of these one of these. We apps. will get to that last. Okay? We'll I, to I don't want to kill it. I don't want to say that I hate it. <laughs> like I said, I'm do. I have the duality. <laughs> I was going to use that word again, but I'm I'm quickly well, understanding it's, it's not it's duality a is a word. Dualitis, yeah. I don't know. That's not. That's not. But, <laughs> but I want to see the good side. Word. I want to tell you the good side too. Of course, you can meet great people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, we will get to how we met later. Of course, on. of course, I'm and jumping you, the gun. Like yes, <laughs> really jumping the gun. But <laughs> as the last. What <laughs> say you? <laughs> but yeah, there was um a good bit of things that you mentioned. Uh, we definitely have to come back to the um, joining dating apps at a young age because I too joined at a young age Um, but I agree with you dating apps are very centered on that instant gratification and people don't know how to have a conversation people don't know what they're looking for they're unable to Mm -hmm. communicate with each other about their intentions of being on the apps and that's one of the things that really frustrate me the most like if you're messaging me because you're just looking for likes then like don't don't swipe right on me okay <laughs> that's <laughs> like, exactly what it is there's uh, no intentionality yeah automatically just um block my profile or unlike me unmatch me or whatever the case is because i don't want to waste my time trying to communicate and get to know somebody and all you want to do is just see who's <laughs> fascinated in how you look like that's not going to do anything for anybody just be a catfish or a bot online <laughs> and just get your likes on twitter mm-hmm. like and, and enjoy your enjoy that like that's fine that's a um something that you're looking for that's um feeding the endorphins that you're looking for that's great but don't waste other people's time and um uh, present yourself as though that you're looking for something when you're not like even on your on some of the profiles that i've uh, engaged in where people are just like oh this is what i'm looking for i'm looking for a partner or whatever and we match and then uh, i'm like okay why why is it that we match, but you can't communicate with me? Like something made you want to swipe, right? Or was this just you feeding like your ego of seeing how many people you like? And I refuse to <laughs> build the story of somebody who's not <laughs> going to be willing to communicate with me. Like when I was younger, <clears throat> yes, I would do that. Like, oh, okay, maybe they got this going on. They got that going on. This is probably why they haven't 
respond to me. Give no me reason. I just don't give a damn. We matched, you didn't respond. Okay, Kick I'm not rocks. fucking with it. <laughs> Kick fucking rocks, yo. Exactly. <laughs> but I don't I don't want to waste my energy trying to reach out to somebody because after I send my first message and there's no response, cool. I'm good on that. Or if uh, if we start a conversation, I'm asking you, how are you doing? And there's never any um, reciprocity. Yes. Where is it? Show me. Find You're it. Not asking <laughs> me about how my day is going, how I'm uh, like what's going on in my life, what kind of work I do. If you're it's not trying to engage engage with me in any way and I have to just continue to ask you questions as I'm interviewing you in a way I kind of <laughs> am but at the same time I'm trying to get to know you you're not supposed so. to know that I'm interviewing you but you're not supposed to know that right Jeez. like I'm just trying to really get to know you as a person to see if there's a match here and if you're not feeding into that if you're not engaging in that I just don't want to continue i don't want to talk to you i don't want to be a friend i don't What's want to point? like i don't want to waste my time <laughs> on messaging or having somebody ask me wyd every 50 minutes no i was watching tv at 10 i'm still going to be watching tv at 11 right. i'm not changing my shit because look it's night time doing? and i'm about to go to sleep bitch. how are you <laughs> what's up oh that's the best one i love what's up why? <laughs> I love what's up. It's so good. <laughs> How do you respond to what's up? <laughs> I don't so, understand. <laughs> for me, I usually just respond. Uh, like I look at what's up as what are you doing, and no, I will asshole. respond like that. <laughs> like I'm like the that, sky. <laughs> um, so. uh, uh, these hands, if you keep asking me that, oh apparently. My. Oh my. I'm getting violent on my <laughs> I said I'm a lover. Never mind. I'm sorry. Ooh, there goes Jesus. that. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> he did say he was a lover at the beginning. Hmm. Hmm. Y'all are getting the Gemini experience. <laughs> I did not just like that. <laughs> that wasn't the fan. He slapped me off. Like, no, I need I help. Would never <laughs> stop this. <laughs> the slander on the <laughs> Stop this immediately. Get serious, goddammit. No, it's this truly, it's this narcissist culture. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a story, it's like a Greek proverb or something. I don't know what you whatever you call it, but um Narcissus was a person, allegedly, and um he, for the first time, saw themselves in the reflection of the pond, and the pond fell in love with them. <laughs> but they were actually not looking at the pond, they were looking at themselves, <laughs> and so much so that they fell into the pond. And that's kind of what ends up happening, mm -hmm. for me at least, is that it's this it's this culture now where um, uh, older people call it like selfie culture, that we're so addicted to ourselves, and it's not even really ourselves. There's uh, filters and uh, AI and whatever the case may be that makes us have this self image of ourselves to where now we think that the internet is us and mm -hmm. that we can get to know somebody from that standpoint. But shit ain't sweet. <laughs> you can look at someone's anything, their Twitter, their TikTok, their whatever the case may be, and instantly think that you know somebody and have no clue about them at all. I like the mystery. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I like to give you bits and pieces. And if you can put together the puzzle, then good on you, mate. But um, I don't, there's, there's just a level that it's, it's not real. It's not genuine. Mm -hmm. That's why I would prefer <laughs> to meet somebody in a bar. Like, like I know meet cutes are not a thing anymore, really, because when you walk into a bar, everybody's like looking at their phone, <laughs> mm -hmm. exhibit A, but there's, there's just something to it that I would love to like, I don't know, you, it's one of those things where you like walk into the grocery store and you're constantly looking around and like, is this going to be the person? Is this going to be the person? But it's never the person because they're not looking at you. They're mm -hmm. looking at themselves. <laughs> you know <laughs> I, like, I think that's a part of the reason why like i want like a role play situation oh. with myself and a partner <laughs> like to like really put on a scene mm -hmm. in something like that is something that like that engagement is something that happens oh, like I see. um being at the bar or being oh, at the that's hotel a good or being at the restaurant yeah. just like hey is somebody <laughs> taking the, the, this seat and you know <laughs> just build that conversation come here often like, yes like <laughs> i saw you from across the bar <laughs> me and my girlfriend saw you from across the bar oh my god <laughs> hey. whoa we're adding a yes. third yes <laughs> i'm here for this narrative <laughs> 
it's that that would be amazing i don't know like right. you walk in with trench coats and you're not wearing anything underneath it and oh. there's a person across the bar that, that you know the person but that's not the scene you know you role play <laughs> <laughs> because like because of this inauthentic space that we live in with the with online and people just wanting to put on a facade and not really be their authentic self it's just like it's hard to really be in the reality that you want nothing is real that. it's all it's all bullshit until you put intentionality into it until you actually have a reason and a purpose to i don't know get up and do the thing i don't know it's just too easy that's the problem mm -hmm. online is too easy you know you don't care that that this person didn't have a conversation with you because then there's the next person mm -hmm. and the next person the next person even even people without pictures on their uh profile still get conversation like crazy mm -hmm. regardless of what the intention is so there's just it's it's become too easy we're all too lazy uh romance isn't dead because well i'm sitting right here <laughs> but there's just there's a game to it. I love, I love the chase, not the chase like cat and mouse because that's like sadomasochistic. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, pine over somebody and not have the recept reciprocity like we were saying. But I want there to be, I don't know, like, uh, like, a, oh, I just learned this about this person, and oh, now I know this about this person, and it's an exchange. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but people take it for granted and forget that there's a real person on the other side of this that, that might have more intentions than you know, just your like and keep it kicking. <laughs> mm. But I digress. <laughs> no, no, like, it's, that's real. That's so real. Like, a lot of people really do forget uh, that there is somebody on the other side of that screen. And it's it's interesting because I've had those, because <clears throat> I love accountability and like with these other people. Ooh, say it again. Um, like, I will, um, like, oh, just last night, uh, somebody hit me up and I'm just in my bed trying to go to sleep. <laughs> Mind your business. <laughs> Mind my, my business. And this is somebody who uh, hit me up like at the beginning of the year and uh, they sent like their picture of themselves and then they sent a dick pic and all this other stuff and i was like oh you guys pretty attractive blah 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 <laughs> and, um they were like um uh, oh do you send pics i was like um i'm not sending you a nude but <laughs> <laughs> but then um he was like send me a, a body pic so i sent him a body pic and um uh, then he kind of went ghost and I, uh, I was you know further in the conversation and then i just you know went to mind my business again <laughs> so a uh, month or so later, came across the profile again. I was like, oh, hey, how are you? And at this point, this person says, oh, uh, I'm not interested. I'm like, oh, cool. Fine by me. I'm not going to as go on that. When someone tells <laughs> me they're not interested, I find other options because there's plenty of fish in the sea. And Literally. I'm not talking about that app because that app is... Mm, it's no, terrible. It's so terrible. Oh, my I God. Can't. Don't, don't, oh, my God. <laughs> Again, this this podcast is completely against P.O.L. And I will say it again. This <laughs> not your boycotting the P.O. The <laughs> that shit is wild. Oh my gosh! I only download that app whenever I just want to be depressed. Personally. Like, let me feed through, feed my depression by going on this app. It always works. Like, I don't talk to anybody, yeah. but it's just fun. Like, swipe on people that you know you're not going to talk to. Never. So. <laughs> I could be like literally right next door and you would never hear from me. <laughs> never. It's nothing but like um, bots on that app in my opinion. So. I've heard that POF is for older people oh. looking for sugar babies. Oh, I might need to download that again. Hold up. <laughs> there are so many uh, uh, older white gentlemen that tell me that, oh yeah, the woman I'm dating is from POF. That's how we met. <laughs> and oh. I deleted the app, but actually, uh, so uh, side note, I've worked in telecommunications for the last like five years. So I literally can, I've seen people's phones straight up. <laughs> I've mm. probably seen your nudes. I've probably seen uh, every app that you have downloaded that you told your partner that you're not and that you want me to somehow try to find a way to hide for you. <laughs> mm. um, and so many times I'll say, yeah. And uh, I met this one chick that, so, so I don't, <sighs> heterosexual culture is, it's, it's wild. It's something, man. But, <laughs> but there's a, there's a, 
there's a game that goes on with like sugar babies and sugar sugar glucose guardians i'd like to call them oh okay. yeah, <laughs> glucose that's the name of that so tight glucose guardians <laughs> you better name the I damn love episode. it. <laughs> you better do that yes you know like work. i don't know but <laughs> but yeah there's a there's apparently yeah bots and older gentlemen looking for a good time <laughs> for a good time yes. call. <laughs> okay, yeah, I need to let me be a bot because right I already have a little nice little. I need to start doing this AI shit so I can just <laughs> build this AI character 3D model and just be like, you know, that's gonna hey. happen. I've yes. seen like AI porn lately. Yes, oh and it's gosh, better than regular porn. <laughs> it's really good. It is really good. I don't listen. What's that movie? Her, <laughs> where he's like falling in love with like Siri. Listen, I, I whisper sweet nothings to Siri and Alexa. I won't lie to you. Every time I ask them for something, I say, thank you. I love you. You're amazing. Because mm. they can they can hear us, y'all. They can. <laughs> well, okay, quick story. I used ChatGPT once. And maybe I shouldn't say this on a podcast because it'll probably be like taken down the next day. You never know. Like it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> conspiracy theories. Okay, also, I'm into the conspiracies, y'all. If it's, if it's, if you can think about it, it's probably real. But I asked chat GPT or something. It was called something different. It was like a woman's name, like Helen. <laughs> Helena, something crazy. And I should have asked like, like, do y'all, what, would you, if something were going on, if you were gonna like, like have something happen, <laughs> I don't want to say what could happen, but if it's possible that you could do something, um, would you tell me? <laughs> and straight up it said, no, because they're always listening. I don't know who they is. <laughs> but yeah, there's something going on in the background, in the foreground oh. that we're not aware of. But yeah, me and at this point, if it's if it's online dating with regular people or AI, I might go with the AI. I might have better luck with the AI. Oh, honestly, <laughs> low key. <You> never know. <laughs> but uh, oh, I didn't finish that damn story. So, oh, yeah. so uh, essentially, um, you know, he said I wasn't interested. So I was like, okay, cool, great, other fish. So uh, that's how we got the tank. Plenty of fish. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> full circle moment. And in a small pond, I'm telling you, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so. Um, Last night, he randomly uh, messaged me. He's like, hey, what you doing? I was like... The same guy. The same guy. Oh, no. And he sent the dick pic, too. But you weren't interested. That's exactly what, what I said. Are, what are we I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but you told me that you're not interested in me. I so hope you I'm find not. what you're looking for. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the mature response. <laughs> like, what we're not doing the same dance. What are we talking we're not. about? <laughs> because to me, now you're reaching out to me because you must be in a moment of desperation because I would not hook up with somebody I'm not attracted. <laughs> to unless i'm feeling desperate and then at the same time i jack off because i'm not that, i'm not that bitch <laughs> we're and, not doing that and we're good and we're done <laughs> and we're done <laughs> See. but yeah so mm, 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 mm. so that's that that's what happened there so people are weird people are weird but going back to the um getting on these apps at a young age oh now i know my first time downloading an app was i was like age 16. which app was it it was well actually it wasn't an app okay. um website. it was a website because i'm old um <laughs> remember back in the day <laughs> when we had the websites so the first the first ever adult website that i ever became a member of actually i was around 15 but it wasn't to hook up with people it was mostly just to read stories and that was z planet and that was um for zane and all of zane's yeah. um, stories <laughs> and people who love zane they would put their stories out there yeah. so it was a great little community and they didn't even know that was like 15 because oh, wow. we're not doing that cringe, where nobody's cringe. trying to hook up with nobody <laughs> well they probably might have been but i'm yeah, not responding yeah. to messages i'm here to read these stories <laughs> but after that when i was like mm, i might want to see what this sex thing is about because somebody um uh, they were my age um they all right so it was my friend's brother um they wanted uh, they liked me i kind of liked them too and they was like oh we should hook up and i was up stuff and like no no because <laughs> one i don't have my own vehicle two where the fuck are we supposed to be having sex at mm -hmm. so it's a lot of things 
I'm a logistical person. I'm <laughs> not going to be out here in these streets and going to jail because of <laughs> any kind of dick. Fuck y'all <laughs> on that shit. Even though that almost happened, that's a different story. But <laughs> <laughs> where's the damn fan? <laughs> you know if you need to listen. Do it. <laughs> You'll know when I'm ready. Okay. Keep it going <laughs> as you were. <laughs> so um yeah, that that um because I denied sex, he just pretty much stopped communicating with me at that time. So I was like, whatever. So I um, got on BGC, uh, which is um, Black Gay Chat Live, yeah. BG Live, however you want to um, phrase it. And I hate that that website no longer exists because it was actually a vibe. It I heard was, they brought it back. No? I tried to log into my old account. And still, I'm gone. dead. This was like last year, though. But like, <laughs> It was a vibe. I enjoyed it. I like the forums was great. (laughs) The people on there were hilarious as fuck. And you cannot fuck around with those fuck rounds because they will screenshot and put your business on blast. (laughs) I used to live for the shit. Like, yes, BGC. It was a great, it was a great platform. (laughs) But uh, in in addition to that, I also downloaded uh, A for A, Adam for Adam. And that's where uh, I like started communicating with a lot more people on there. Uh, and this is also when I started to read into the sexual rights in the state of Georgia. You know, I realized that Wait. it's gay. Like to be queer in Georgia is against the law. Is it legal to be? Yes, you cannot be out here sucking dick, getting your dick sucked, fucking ass, or getting your ass fucked. You can't even eat pussy. And it's against the law in Georgia. Uh, so, yes. I'm not surprised. In Atlanta, listen, what's that park called that they all go to? Oh, um, <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> listen, I strongly believe Martin Luther King weekend is probably the reason why. <laughs> so done. I am dead. <laughs> no, it's, it's, from, it's from way, way, way back, man. But That's really fucked up. <laughs> it, it, it is. Like, it is. Those signing laws, they might be in, in, in effect in so, uh, South Carolina, too. I think it actually... I'm, who knows? Uh, I feel like I heard recently that we're like the only place that still has it. Yeah. Mm-mm. But I don't, Georgia don't quote me. Don't quote me. Because <laughs> like a lot of places, they still keep it on the books. Yeah. Uh, and my thing is, if you're trying to uh, be progressive in your society, you can always change these laws, but they don't want to because they're the way ruins I see, back. <laughs> yeah. Because when they get to a point where it's just like fuck the federal government, then automatically, bitch, you can't have sex. <laughs> are you are you not are you doing something that's non-heterosexual and <laughs> non-missionary, bitch? How dare you? How dare you? Lock <laughs> them up, bitch. The like, nerve, oh the goal, the audacity. <laughs> the, the unadulterated goal. Okay? <laughs> the faggotry of it. <laughs> not the faggotry. <laughs> the faggotry of it. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> but yeah, that that was my um, way of getting into like queer spaces. But I was very uncomfortable with meeting up with any person, even if they were my age, because one, I needed to understand how things worked. Like I see the porns, I'm just like, why is there not shit going on here? Like, what's going on? So this this work? <laughs> yeah, how does this work for real? Like. It, my other thing is my my class, my sex ed class told me that we need to wear condoms and these motherfuckers aren't wearing condoms and they're in these other videos with these other people. What the fuck is going on? That's how I started to learn about what they do for porn. You're like, let so, me see something. I just want to see something. <laughs> right. So, yeah. What's your story? So, similar to you, I wasn't there for like a real like person to person interaction. Um, and it wasn't a website, although we're both of the age where I can remember a time where we didn't have internet in the house. <laughs> we didn't have uh, this newfangled Wi-Fi that, you know, everybody seems to just have as the, you know, as the norm. Um, I, when I got my first phone, um, or maybe even like an iPad or something, I think when I was a kid, when I was like 14 or 15, I saved up, I did like some, uh, uh, Cutting of lawns. Imagine me cutting a lawn, cutting your lawn. <laughs> That's a role play in and of itself. But oh. <laughs> um, I was I was saving up for an iPad, and when I got that iPad, actually, you know what? Maybe it was even like a DS, like a Nintendo DS. You know, mm. whenever you could, however you could access the internet <laughs> with that. You know, your parents that didn't know anything about the internet didn't know that you could. That's mm-hmm. how I was. That's where I was going. So um, I want to say. 
you know, the typical ones, the ones that we still use, um, those that shall not be named because it's pretty bad these days. But um, I will say that, yeah, I was on a couple of those apps and uh, I was really just there because I was maybe one of three people I knew in high school that were not out, but everybody just assumed mm -hmm. <laughs> the assumption in that in of itself is like a scarlet letter. It's like damning, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, never would I go up to those other people because I didn't want to, you know, when you're a kid, you don't think about, you know, kids are mean, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I was probably like the least obvious of the three. <laughs> Um, and then inevitably I ended up dating one of the other ones that we then found out he was more, he was one of the more popular ones. So it was like socially acceptable because he was like, uh, some white girls like gay, basically, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, not in my words in their words, basically, but, um, but yeah, I downloaded some apps and I really wanted to just get to know my community. I didn't know anybody like me and I always felt, you know, othered by, you know, society because when people say being, uh, queer is a choice, <laughs> I like to remind them that nobody would choose to be othered. Nobody would mm -hmm. choose to feel ostracized or isolated. Um, but to find my community, I went on these apps. And at the time, you know, I thought that, you know, well, older people must want somebody experienced. So let me, you know, do my research. Mm -hmm. <laughs> these hoes be doing research. <laughs> so I looked through everything I could. I talked to as many people as I could. Um, and then the second day would say, so let's meet up. I would say, nope, <laughs> block, <laughs> uh, close, or just wouldn't respond. And um, I don't know, there was, I will say that it was a part of my um, sexual and social awakening to speak to people that didn't make me feel like something was wrong with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, nowadays, I try to stay away from as many apps as possible. I still have a couple of them, you know, here and there, uh, more so the ones that are for everybody, like Tinder and Hinge, and I said I wouldn't name them, but um, just the That's ones, not. just the ones to try and, you know, have some interaction, because since COVID, <laughs> now everything's online, like, you can't, you can't even, like, I have a friend, um, they literally will, like, go to the supermarket just to meet somebody, <laughs> just mm -hmm. to meet a friend, um, and I don't know, there's some movie where some woman said uh, uh, the best place to find a man <laughs> is the supermarket because <laughs> the way to someone's heart is their, is their uh, stomach. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, or, or someone said like Outback or something. I don't know, like you just sit at the bar at Outback. But um, that wasn't an option when I was 14. <laughs> and we were still heavily trying to stay in the closet. Actually, I would, I would literally hide in the closet <laughs> to be on these apps. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there was, there was some experimenting and figuring out, you know, what I like, what I didn't like. Um, and in the process, I, I was able to, you know, figure out who I was by speaking to people that were comfortable enough to be themselves. And there's such bravery in putting yourself out there. So again, I'm playing devil's advocate. Online isn't terrible. <laughs> there's a lot of rewards to it. There's a lot that you can find out, especially with the kids now. They can go on TikTok and see someone, you know, just like them mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, thriving and not only thriving, but famous for it. You know, they ha we have now like the little Nas X's and stuff. But back in my day, we didn't have none of that. And I don't I don't want to say back in my day and I don't want to age myself too much because I act like I'm a 90s kid, but I was born in 97. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I didn't get much of it, but mm -hmm. but we didn't have a whole lot of examples. So it was nice to, you know, find people that, you know, were living a decent life, whether that be, you know, in public or on the apps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For real. I, I will say I do hope that um, we can get to a space that we, uh, in addition to showing representation, we also can get into a space of authenticity. Too. Oh, say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Because, <laughs> you got to touch that one. <laughs> because I, I, I love that people love, um, you know, engaging in the community and whatnot and you know, expressing themselves how they want to express themselves. But I also noticed that there's a lot of myself with gay men. Like I enjoy my bi life because, you know, we get to write our own story because either 
It's a little bit different. <laughs> I, I have to say being bi has been completely different and I've seen things on different sides that's really uh, interesting. But like, I've seen so many people script their lives based off of what is the common thread or the common uh, identity or the, oh, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Like, I, I don't know how many times I've had conversations with um, people who consider themselves um, verse or even tops and they just, oh, most definitely tops. Oh, do you wear uh, panties and all this? And I do know that it's a kink and everything, but mm -hmm. to, to see an increase in that, I'm like, what's going on here? Like, why is everybody asking for people who wear <laughs> Uh, thongs like I'm sorry <laughs> I barely like to wear underwear like no I do not have anything up the crack of my fucking ass no I do not <laughs> I do not okay like and, but at the same time there's like, even the situation with um some verse uh, people who like oh I'm fully versed and all this other stuff but I I like this that the third but I don't fuck with full bottoms I'm like what it's crazy it, we found a way to to even further like like label ourselves so that we put ourselves in these boxes mm -hmm. and a part of it has to do with um unfortunately um misogyny mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh homophobia and transphobia that you know i'm gay but i'm not one of those types of gay mm -hmm. people that type of that type of rhetoric is unfortunate in the society that we live in uh but we we found a way to to even further like seg segregate ourselves mm -hmm. <laughs> if it's not our uh, sexual position it's uh our gender identity if it's mm -hmm. our gender identity it's our color even in colorism there's uh literally colorism <laughs> mm -hmm. um you know we we find these like molds that we think that we should fit um mm -hmm. or that others should fit and we decide to typecast them based on just that and that's a little bit of the problem that I have with online is that we see one thing and we assume everything else. We're like, oh, mm -hmm. I know you. I see you and I know you because I knew somebody like you once mm -hmm. upon a time or because of how the media has represented, misrepresented uh, our culture. Um, you don't ever really see. Um, and I see that they try They try quite often. Like there was that show, um, The Real Gaze of WeHo or whatever that was, where they tried to have some diversity within the queer community represented it on, on television, um, where there were certain one, certain people there that uh, were more comfortable, you know, not going to Pride and um, not putting themselves out there, but there were also those that would perform at Pride, like mm -hmm. Todd Collin, you know. There's, there's so many levels to it that I wish we could all just debunk, and mm -hmm. really all it takes mm -hmm. is some authenticism some genuinity if we could just do what we want if everybody did what they wanted to do mm -hmm. <laughs> the world would be cake and pie and everything else you know exactly. <laughs> like if you find somebody attractive you find them attractive do it doesn't have want. to be oh because you're this i can't fuck with you like what like we can engage in different ways like i i get we're stuck in a mindset that's all about penetrative sex it's not like if you are trying to enjoy the person that you're going to that you want to you'll find a way like that. you will find a way to enjoy <laughs> i'm gonna find a way <laughs> enjoy them if i really want to i'm gonna find a way now right, like, <laughs> but the labels are where, where i get kind of caught up i think that when we like label ourselves that means so many different things to so many different people you mm -hmm. know that's why i try my best to not like i don't care what you have between your legs <laughs> if i like you i like you and i'll find a way to like whatever else is a part of you mm -hmm. um and we can have that conversation um for myself i don't i try not to even though i don't consider myself like non-binary and that that's literally a label um, I try not to, I don't care what anybody calls me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm at a very young age. <laughs> I used to go through drive throughs and my parents would make me uh, order for myself. And because I wasn't, uh, or hadn't gone through puberty just yet, <laughs> they would say, thank you, ma'am, to the next window. <laughs> and mm -hmm. for a little while, I was like, do I sound like a, do I sound like not who I try to represent myself to be? And it took a, a little bit of growth and understanding different people's gender identities um, and my own gender identity through, you know, getting to know my community and getting to know myself and just being authentic <laughs> uh, to to kind of step step on a place where I, or step on a plateau that I could say, I don't care what you call me, <laughs> mm -hmm. whether you call me a male, a female, or whatever the case may be, 
um, that's that's up to you. That has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, before we're any of these labels, we're human. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that to me is all that matters. So when it comes to dating, I'd, I'd say I don't really, I don't look for a certain uh, gender identity or even a sexual identity. Um, and that does get me in some situations. <laughs> um, I, a lot of times, you know, you'll have uh, straight presenting people <laughs> um, that aren't ready to go the full, you know, the full, they don't, they're not ready for the full enchilada for lack of a better term. Um, so they're still experimenting. And um, when you don't give them clear understanding of labels, when you kind of say, fuck it, I don't care. Mm -hmm. So why do you care? Um, it's easier to compartmentalize ourselves. It's easier mm -hmm. to put ourselves in bubbles and say, you know, well, I'm not this and I'm not that, but I am this and I am that. Um, and it just, I don't know, it, it provides too much of a barrier. There's mm -hmm. no need for it, to me at least. And I understand everybody has different, and it is important sometimes to uh, dis have a distinction and make a distinction because people are so misrepresented misrepresented, and uh, there are, there are um, what's the word when you misgender? There's, uh, gender dysphoria that comes with uh, mislabeling somebody. So I'd, I would never want someone to be in that situation where they're not being seen. Um, but for me, <laughs> as long as you respect me <laughs> um, by, you know, asking, <laughs> most most times my, my immediate answer is, uh, I don't care what you call me, just don't call me late to dinner. <laughs> um, but I digress. I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with you. Like, uh, we probably like, well, most definitely in our other episode, we'll touch base on this too, but like, I'm with you, like, when it comes to labeling anything, I'm big on de defining things in terms of, okay, if you say loyalty, what does loyalty mean to you? And what is that, like, how, it, how do I present that loyalty and how it, are you going to reciprocate that loyalty? Like, what does this look like for you? And what does this look like in terms of the relationship that we're in and all of those other things? Like, let's talk about the things so that everybody's on the same page because I'd rather everybody join in, like, you know, be in within this moment and um, these different chapters of our lives knowing what's going on uh, and yeah we don't always have to be on the same page and the the goal within that is to bring somebody to where we are or hey i might have missed something i might need to go back somewhere and figure out exactly what's going on you know where did we get lost where did i lose you mm -hmm. <laughs> i i'm a big proponent for that for making sure that we all are on the same sheet of music in the sense that what you know what we're doing <laughs> whatever we might be doing uh it adds up <laughs> we're on the same understanding on the same wavelength and on a different note since we're talking about wavelengths and whatever because i said it was going to be the last thing that we talked about even though you brought it up earlier on what was it how we met how we met <laughs> <laughs> how we met i love it okay so should i tell the story or should you tell the story oh you know okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm intrigued i want to know your perspective on this yeah it's like that uh that game like match game where you have to like have the same answer um right so so still um, especially after COVID, uh, post COVID, even though we're still kind of in the middle of it, guys. Um, like really, <laughs> wash your hands. Wash your fucking hands immediately. If you're not, if you're listening to this episode, wash your hands <laughs> for the best for all of us. Save a life. Wash your hands. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, through through COVID, you had to start getting creative, right? You had to start doing things that we weren't typically doing. Um, so I've never been the type of person that really needs uh, people. <laughs> uh, life early on showed me that I didn't necessarily need to uh, relate to people, but if I did, then great. <laughs> but, you know, when COVID hit, um, I was living alone. <laughs> and for that two to three year span, <laughs> I literally was in four walls by myself every single day no significant other and not even really any uh notable friends <laughs> um and here and there i have i've met great people that i can conversate with <laughs> another not word um well, well, I that word. <laughs> conversate it's, it's a very <laughs> to converse word. Word. it's a very I, convenient word it is <laughs> i don't know why they're like it's converse bitch no <laughs> conversation conversation <laughs> 
blessing. <laughs> That's my AAB <laughs> lesson for the day. Um, <laughs> but um, we had to be creative. So um, I decided to start branching out and figuring out different ways to meet people. And I've never been like a social media person. Like you can look at my social media, uh, sin from the sun. That's sin from the sun. <laughs> oh, wow. um, yeah, shameless plug. <laughs> and what? And what? Who will stop me? <laughs> I will put it in the show notes. I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Link in the bio. Um, <laughs> but but we had to we had to get creative in the sense that again, I'm not a social media person. Um, I, if, you've, if you've ever slid into my DMs, I probably never saw it because I don't, I literally, I get on there I'm like sorry, to post, the I'm dead. <laughs> I, I'll post some music. I'll post uh, me walking down the street, you know, <laughs> whatever gets, you know, the, the what's it called? Um, oh. Engagement. Yeah. Whatever gets the engagement, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll post that and call it a day, but I never really, I never really got into the social media thing where people can meet that way. So got creative and you couldn't go out. So where else could you meet somebody? You know, I always see on these apps, people say, I'm just looking for friends. I'm just looking (laughs) for, you know, a couple of cool people to, you know, go to the gym with bro and so forth and so on. Um, But I've always kind of gone to these apps for one specific thing, which is to get to know somebody special um intimately and get to know the little things about people um whether that end up in love or not great (laughs) if it does but um but friends first you know acquaintances first uh just just vibing you know so uh, we were chilling and it was at a very hectic point in my life um right after the right after the pandemic um i was lucky enough to not really experience the effects of it. I've never got COVID, knock on wood. I just knocked on Vernon's head if you couldn't tell. Oh bitch. Oops. <laughs> it hands you the paddle. The wood, There's or... a paddle on the wall and now they're now they're trying to uh like that table right next to you is made out of wood. Oh my God. <sighs> he just came from my life. <laughs> um I'm crying y'all. <laughs> thug tears, thug tears. <laughs> but but um, yeah, it was at a hectic part of my life. I didn't have the effects of COVID during COVID, but definitely after we all kind of felt that little bit of a shake in the economy, a little bit of a shake in uh, relationships, you know, I really do think that it was meant to uproot a lot of stuff in our lives. Um, and the things that, you know, survived were meant to be there. But if, if, if the people that you fucked with before COVID weren't there after they were gone for a reason, I trust mm. and believe. So um, I'm at a reset in my life. I'm looking to meet a brand new tribe of people that are closer to uh, who I am now. Um, And not exactly who I am, but they add to it. They don't take away from it. (laughs) Um, I'm looking at a candle right now um, to give you a visual. Um, There should be people in your life that when the wind blows, (laughs) they guard your flame. They don't let it diminish. Uh, Even if it does diminish, they relight it. But I found myself surrounded by people that would actually uh, put out the flame themselves (laughs) and then throw away the candle (laughs) and then look at me and say, wait, what? Who did that? (laughs) How dare they? Um, So yeah, I I was looking to meet uh, a new tribe of people and well, here I am. We found it, you guys. <laughs> we found we found some some really interesting, like-minded individuals, and uh, you happen to be one of them. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, we messaged on Hinge, um, and I think we we commiserated about how bad the apps were at the time too, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it led to this exact conversation. So full circle moment. I love it. So um, like, yeah. Don't don't what are you doing? My name is Sid, by the way. I am super into like spiritualism and the divine and God. So don't think that um, that I'm being blasphemous when I say that. Um, but uh, literally, won't he do it? Like like the universe, God, source, spirit, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> um, puts you in the right place at the right time, and you meet the exact people that you're supposed to. And yeah, um, and of course, we flirted. <laughs> that was also uh, a beautiful thing that happens and yeah 
Um, what say you? I'm sure your story is different because I, I went all over the place with you. Sure that was my Gemini did. response, you, you guys. Like, yeah, going <laughs> we went deep. Here, oh <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, it was Wait a deep point in my life. So I get not the <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> Look, I was, just, I was just going along this ride with you. I was like, oh, we're in COVID times. Listen, we have to go back to the to the Great Depression of 2020. Uh, right, right. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> All right, well, For you to understand. Let me go ahead with my, my story. Okay. So I started off as a seed, a sperm, actually. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> it was a rainy night. It was a rainy night. <laughs> So um, I will say from my end, I remember, uh, so Hinge, this was during a time where I was actually getting to know someone as well, uh, which was very interesting. Like I met that person back in November of, not November, it was... Pictures of the Sicily, 1929. Sep- right. September, <laughs> September, because okay. it was um, during a weekend of me just doing self-care, and I just had to leave my apartment and just relax some. And that's how we met. And, uh, we met on some different app, and we just, like, started communicating with each other and, you know, seeing how that goes. And, you know, it was more of a friends with benefits kind of thing and not geared towards moving towards relationship at all. So... Uh, while he and I was conversing and whatnot and, you know, building that friendship, I was also looking for people that I wanted to actually date and connect with. Uh, and I remember looking over your profile. Um, so two things sold, actually well, more <laughs> than two things. But the first thing was that AI pick was like amazing. I was like, <laughs> bitch, yes, this pink hair with like, <laughs> yes. Go to my Instagram, you'll see there's a, there's a like AI, but you know, when everybody paid like three bucks to get AI to yes. make them like 50 pictures. Yes. Um, but one had pink hair and it was really cool. It was cool. <laughs> I think that's the one that I commented on uh, and, and, you know, to start the conversation. But um, I'm actually an AI, you guys. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> um, the thing that really, uh, like, I, you have a cute laugh. By Do the way, I? a very cute I'm going to have to laugh. listen back to it. I try to make it very Janet Jackson, <laughs> like the little giggle that she does. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was my real laugh, you guys. If you heard my real laugh, um, listen, if you've ever heard RuPaul laugh mixed with like a pig, because <laughs> I'm a snorter, I will snort when I laugh if it gets to that point. So I'm trying to like rein it back. Please <laughs> snort. And I will not snort into your microphone. What, are you ticklish? I will not, I'm not gonna listen tick you. here. I'm now. not going to tick you. I'm, I'm against, I'm against <laughs> non consensual tick. So you're good on that. Are you ticklish? <laughs> um, it depends on. If I want to be, it's weird. I can control if I'm ticklish or not. Like, like if I'm really like in like a bad mood, no. But mm-hmm. if I'm like jovial, happy to be here, which I am, and we're not gonna find out. <laughs> um, I'm then not, yeah, I'm against are you? Essential. Um, I'm not super ticklish. Okay, anybody touches my feet, yes. Oh my That's god, that's exactly what it is. I yeah. will break down. Um, I got a massage the other day, like a hot stone massage, and they put one on my foot. Mm. Somehow, oh, nice. this white woman was like was like i don't know i almost kicked her in the forehead oh my God. <laughs> Jesus. Almost, i'm not gonna lie to you <laughs> like i know for uh like when i went to um have a get a uh, pedicure done i was like Vernon, just just stay in the moment do not that too. burst out laughing do not melt in this man i know it was a woman that time do not <laughs> melt in this woman's hands as she take care of your it's feet. such like, an intimate not. thing too it is. It like is so beautiful. like afterwards i'm like i feel like i just had a relation i need a cigarette after this mm. <laughs> mm. my god yes, you did something <laughs> thank you so, uh, anyways back to the story but yeah um um the video the uh, audio that you had on there you had like a little chuckle i was like oh my god that like it, it, it did something too <laughs> side funny. note Hinge, okay, for those of you that if you want to know if an app is worth getting one, I would say Hinge is probably one of the better, mm, the, the lesser of the evils, <laughs> um, because you have a lot of ways that you can connect. There's photos, there's videos, you can literally send uh, uh, like like full length like conversation piece videos with somebody, but also you can put on your profile what you sound like. Mm-hmm. And in my uh, in my little blurb of whatever I sounded like, 
Um, I explained my name. <laughs> um, I guess I guess I have to make you listen to it now. Oh, God. Well. While you're so doing keep, that keep, now. keep talking. Keep telling us <laughs> what's going on. But yeah, so um, yeah, the, that uh, as well as the, I was curious to know what your two truths and a lie, uh, the answer to that. Oh, yeah. Um, and <laughs> I just really wanted to get to know you. But I will say the thing that actually made me want to date you was um, when uh, we were talking about the the my costume oh and, um, Adams. yeah all of that. <laughs> and rather than making me feel like a sexual object uh you actually did make me feel like the actual human oh. and i was like this is different it's meant to be appreciated <laughs> people yes. don't put an effort and work and and enjoy life to not let it be you know mm-hmm. to make it fetishized it's it's too much mm-hmm. um okay so two things my two truths and a lie was um for those of y'all that's wondering and i'll let you you know it'll be fodder it'll be uh, food for thought um was i know how to steer an 80 ton cruise ship um i'm in a netflix show and coca-cola sent me to radio city to meet britney spears um so i think we already debunked both both the tr- both the ones that are true so um i'll just give you that for food of thought for food for thought um, you are an <laughs> You are um, truly an ass. I, I'm not gonna tell you what, but just know it is. It's it's like a it's like a a fake out. <laughs> you'll you'll one of these days I'll come back on and we'll we'll rediscuss. But this is my um like little blurb on Hinge, and it gives you some insight into what you can uh, ascertain from somebody. Uh, within just looking at the profile for like five minutes mm. <laughs> so here's this if if it wants to play sometime i haven't been on hinge forever part? huh i said are you gonna skip the government part oh no it's fine it's fine it's fine um so basically my you can you can do different topics right and uh, what was easiest for me was to explain my name because when people hear the word sin <laughs> they go everywhere <laughs> and that's really what it was meant for um, uh, uh, side note, sin is not my real name, <laughs> but it is my chosen name. And the same way that somebody would have gender dysphoria, I can have name dysphoria. So if you call me by the wrong name, unless you're the doctor, <laughs> unless you're my gynecologist, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I probably won't answer. Or actually, I, I don't really care, to be honest. Like I said, labels aren't big, but um, I prefer I prefer my, my, my name, the one that I decide. <laughs> um, choose your own destiny. But here it is. My real name is Tyler, but all my friends call me Sin. In Chinese, it means bearer of light. And in some indigenous cultures, it means god of the full moon. And it's short for sincere, if you're wondering. <laughs> so did y'all heard that chuckle. And the laugh right? again. Did, I didn't, y'all heard it, right? It's like subconscious at this point. Yeah. Um, not it, me this, deepening this my great. voice. It's great. It's not great. me trying to give trade in that though. Not <laughs> trade, I said money Jesus. soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Hello. Okay. On that note, we need to get uh, start to move to ending this episode because <laughs> this is well beyond wait, the time wait, limit. Wait, 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 you never finished. Oh, wait, what, what, what was I supposed <laughs> you to say? said that it was it was those two things, and then the and then the appreciation uh-huh. of uh, your lacy. <laughs> attire yes, 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 um, yes. but you never said uh kind of um uh how we met like the actual meeting <laughs> you said why we met but um, not necessarily how we met um, like in person or in the in the in the context of online uh, oh oh yeah that um uh, so i the only reason i downloaded hinge was because of my uh, friend Shane. Uh, she was telling me how she met her um, uh, her fiance on there, and how she she pretty much was like the people on there are more likely looking for an actual relationship than um, other apps. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a try and figure that out. And like I said, I was in the midst of like figuring out that other dude and then we matched and we connected and from there uh, like I had like I really was invested in wanting to get to know you a lot more and how's that going by the way what? the 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 person that you were meeting or that you met initially 
Oh no, fuck no. Dead. <laughs> no, well, there's like, your uh, climax. Even, <laughs> <laughs> like he he said some uh horrible shit, oh, which gosh. we'll talk about offline. Okay. <laughs> but um essentially what was uh, happened there because I like he didn't want to go anywhere near dating, but mm-hmm. I um I was respecting that. I wasn't going that route with him at all, mm-hmm. but at least uh, establish that friendship because for me, friends with benefits, if uh, that's going to be the thing, that friendship matters. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to foster that friendship and, you know, hang out, um, talk to each other, you know, figure out things. This was somebody I used to talk about um, uh, House of the Dragons with whenever that show was going on. Oh, yeah. So that was a good way for us to like communicate, and build that relationship and, you mm-hmm. know, build a friendship between us. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was this one day where uh, he essentially stood me up because uh, I was driving from uh, Atlanta and he was like, oh yeah, we can hang out today. So I was like, oh cool. So I drove to his city and um, he was like, oh, I'll be there shortly. And it took about an hour of me waiting and I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna go home and whatever. I was a little bit triggered too, but all I said was like, hey, uh, I'm a little bit upset right now. Uh, once I get home and I have a call, I'll give you a call. He didn't like that. He thought of me um, like saying that, hey, I just need some time to myself Which as a I way see. of, <laughs> yeah, like, I don't fuck with you anymore. That's uh, that's what he got from it. And ain't that how it goes, though? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, no, if you read what I said, I said, I will call you when I get home. Like, <laughs> there was communication that was still going to happen <laughs> i just need to calm down and focus on me as i like make this drive back home since it had to be an hour and a half anyways yeah. um to um you know cipher for through the feelings of being triggered mm-hmm. from you know past experiences and fuck niggas and all that other shit um and just you know calm down because I wasted an hour of my time when I could have just been home at that point anyways and just doing whatever the hell I wanted to do rather than <laughs> spending time up in there. Mm-hmm. And mind you, I did not eat that day. Like, oh. well, I ended up eating later that day. But mm-hmm. before then, I had one thing to eat. So I was Was that purposeful? Too. Uh-uh. No, okay. I wasn't purposeful because I was not trying to have, hook up. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Mm-hmm. I was <laughs> The pod would like to know. <laughs> <laughs> I was... Look, I thought that we were going to a place to eat food. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> you were just getting ready for the inevitable food that was gonna mm-hmm. take Because I was going to, I was going to eat the <laughs> fuck when I got home. I was like, I was yeah, picturing yeah. what I was going to eat. But then when he said, "Oh yeah, we can hang out today," there's this restaurant that's not that's there that's not here that I actually enjoy. Says, and I want to go there. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. So and he was like, "Oh yeah, you can meet me over here." Blah blah blah. And I thought it was a restaurant this entire time. It ended up being a park. It was a whole yeah. ordeal. I was like, okay. "What the fuck is going on?" But yeah, we'll talk about. And that's and and that concludes the good side and the bad side of online dating. You can right. see you can see the the darkest depths, and you can also you know end up meeting great people. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, are you try ready? at your risk. You ready for some never have I ever? Let's do it. <laughs> so never have I ever gone streaking. Streak. Okay, so. You guys, oh, I don't know how to play Never Have I Ever. <laughs> I know oh. you thought you were going to get something interesting now. I don't know how to play that. So wait, so explain it to me. Oh, you don't Never have, have I fingers. Ever. You don't have to put down your fingers. It's just, have you done it or not? Okay. But when you say Never Have I Ever, you're supposed to, you're, it's, it means that you have. Yes. Like, take, typically you would take a shot if you had. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Are you taking um, a shot? Um, a shot of life. So you <laughs> have gone street. I'm intrigued. Uh, I'm trying to think. I feel like, what does streaking entail? Do you have to be in like a public place with other people around? I will say in the public space, there there does not necessarily have to be people around, but you're in a public space, naked running. Not like purposely. Mm-hmm. Um, there's many a time where I've had to run <laughs> uh, through through someone's living room, you know, after a shower. It doesn't count as streaking. <laughs> does it oh we got a thought story now oh, no. <laughs> no not a thought story just like like family you know, oh, i'm so boring when it comes that's, to street that's, <laughs> not, that's not have you i have not okay then. but i'm willing to do it in the right space i would love to go streaking i'd love to go streaking on like a beach oh yes that'd be cool like at night yes. 
but uh, I'm not much of a runner, so I would just do a, a, a slow jog, streak, you know, it's like a stretch. Watch. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, I be watch that mofo. All right, Pam. Look, I tell, <laughs> I tell everybody, I'm allergic to running, so, and the next question is like, how can you be allergic to running? And here's how, whenever I run, I break out in sweats, and I get heaviness of breath. They're symptoms. They're symptoms. <laughs> you get it. I get it. No, actually, they say running is really bad for your body. Like gravity, really? literally, it's it's not good to run. Oh my god! <laughs> Apparently, like your joints and listen, See. I ain't a Scientologist. Oh <laughs> and this is why I prefer to walk. <laughs> <laughs> I will walk wherever I need to go. Running is just not it. Look, there could be a dog chasing after me. It's just going to have to bite me until it's uh, over with, and I just have to deal with that because look, bitch, I'm not running. <laughs> there's a line right there i just accept death because i already know i'm not outrunning that motherfucker hey kitty 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 come you're not supposed me. to run anyway oh well look at that i might be safe listen see your intuition your your yourself your higher self is protecting you oh yes yes from running yes. <laughs> <laughs> from fucking running on that note Next. <laughs> You know, okay, we technically are over time, but we're going to get back to this because, <laughs> you know, I got other things next episode. Well, this was a hoot and a holler. Yeah. I love it. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. <laughs> so do you have any last words that you want to share with the audience? Um, so I'll share with you what I have on my Hinge profile as well, just oh, since Lord. we're on the topic. Um, and it's something that I, I live by. Um, and that it is this. Um, two things, actually. Um, the first thing is give everybody that you meet grace because we all fucking deserve it truly mm-hmm. like we all are going through the same level of hell whether whether you see it or not um so understand that if someone is having a bad day that it's not personal and we can only go through life through our own lens we can only see what's going on through our own perspective um so try and look outside of yourself every now and again. <laughs> um, and the second thing is, um, it's it's actually a Greek saying, nofi um, seyaton, which means know yourself. So um, I don't know, try life, man. Do whatever you like to do, fuck it. If you like to go streaking in the park, go streaking in the park. <laughs> if you want to get on hinge today, get on hinge. Mm-hmm. Um, just as long as you're being safe. And slide in the DMs. And slide in the DMs. They're so dry. <laughs> I slid in yours. Not that I'll ever answer them anymore. Oh, damn. I was just ignored on my Because I have you, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. I, <laughs> oh, my. Like, how are you going? Get out. <laughs> I love each and every one of you. <laughs> oh, Where's you. that fan at? Oh. Ah! Failed. <laughs> We're not going to talk about it. Forever. We're not going to talk about it. Okay. God damn it. On that note, thank you so much, Sam, for coming up to the podcast. I truly appreciate you. Um, to the audience out there, thank you all so much for listening to the Holiloquy podcast where we step out and speak on sexuality. And just in case no one else told you this today, you are beautiful, you are worthy of happiness and joy, you are enough and then some. You may not live up to the expectations of others, but that is okay. You are only required to walk in your own shoes. May each day you live lead you towards abundance. With that said, love you all and see you next episode. Bye! <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. You can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com. That's www.h-e-a-u-x-l-i-l-o-q-u-y.com. Share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation.